Hello everyone and welcome back to another part of the e-bike series. Ignore all this stuff behind me, it's for a different project, but anyway, this time I'm going to be cramming the boxes with all the electronic goodies, so enjoy. Okay, so obviously the boxes are finished, um, my camera ran out of battery and I was keen to get ahead, so I've attached the lid. Um, I'm kind of ignoring what the inside looks like, I know it's like a bit of a mess, because once it's closed, you know, you're not really going to be able to see the inside, um, and also I ran out of paint. So if I ever feel like it needs a bit on the inside because I can see through it, I can always get some more. But for now, um, I am just wiring up the XT90 connector that's going to connect these two boxes together. A little something like that. So after I blew up the vest and failed to repair it in part 2, I brought a new one which I have here. It's the same Flipski 4.12 based on the vest 4 which has a voltage range up to 48 volts that will be fine as I'm using a tennis lipo that produces 42 volts. One day I might upgrade this to give me a greater top speed and more power, but we'll see. As to current, it's rated at 50 amps continuous, however I've been consistently pushing 65 amps to it without an issue. And in case you're wondering if this is why the last one failed, then, well, no it's not. I was stupid and accidentally shorted the motor wire so I was testing. Needless to say, with that power going through, I had to add some heat to help with cooling. This is the box that the vest is going in, where there was a hole at one end for the large phase and hall sensor wires to come through. Two of the four batteries are also going to go in here, so as to give a more even weight distribution. See? I did think that one through. Also in here is a board that contains four MOSFETs to connect the vest to power using a small push button and key switch. Let myself and the past explain. This is a, um, a soft start board basically. Um, so the way this works is um, there's a connector here and then there's a switch on the other panel uh, which is going to be in series to a key switch. So when the key switch is open and the switch is pressed, it's the latching one um, which connects two wires in here. It basically gives 5 volts to the gates of these four MOSFETs which then conduct and then allow current to pass through. These are the old connectors um, but essentially from the battery out into the vest and this just reduces any sparks and of plugging batteries or finding big switches. I should also add that each MOSFET is rated for 100 amps so they don't even get warm just passing the current through. This box is primarily where all the power electronics are located and the other side will contain a 12 volt regulator, buttons and batteries. So now I have the switch and the key wired in series so theoretically if this is pressed, the switch is pressed but this is not turned on Obviously no current will flow or anything, likewise um, if this one's on but that one's not, no current will flow, so they've got to be both on. So I've pressed the switch and I think this is the on position for the key and it's these two end wires and hopefully this will beep if there is a connection. Right, there we go. Then if I turn this to the other position, yeah, showing infinite resistance. Okay, so this setup is working. Correctly. I then went through the process of soldering the vest input wires to the power board, which was hard as the wires had so much mass to them, but with a 60 watt station it worked out fine. Next were the circle connectors for the motor wires to bolt onto, which were taken off the old vest. Again, it took quite a bit of flux and heat, but eventually got there and then wrapped them into red electrical tape. After that I needed to work out how to fit all the components into the box, so tried different arrangements before finding this one that worked out. So, um, quite a lot's been going on today in terms of working on the e-bike. Uh, my camera ran out of space on the memory card, ran out of battery, so I haven't done a huge amount of filming today. However, I'm going to do a walkthrough of the boxes and what I've managed to get done. So the first thing you'll probably notice is the addition of this bracket here. Um, this is one of, um, I might add some more, um, the brackets that's going to hold down the batteries. This one here, this one's nice and secure because it's pressed up against that wall. This one is a little bit of flex in the end, so I might put something down the back just to support it. This is obviously the VESC, um, which has been wired into the um, soft start board, or not soft start, a soft switch. There's this, been this connector added, um, which is basically going to be the uh, data connection between the two boxes. So there's this big cable here, which is for power, and then there's this one which is going to be for data. So at the moment, um, two of the wires are for the switch that activates the soft switch and two are for an LED um, which will be around the 
power button to, to say that it's on. Um, then the other four um, wires are going to be connected to the LEDs on the vest and then I'm going to have some LEDs on the front of the other box um, so I can see that the vest is on, getting signal and hopefully not but if there's a fault on the vest. The point of the connector is that I can have this wire going to this box soldered all on, this wire going to this box soldered all on and then I can separate the two boxes. Uh, so these are the only two connectors between the two boxes and also I can just disconnect them like that. So the next challenge is to basically repeat this but on the other box. So wiring these wires up to the switches and the LEDs. So um, a lot of work has gone into these two boxes. I haven't been filming because I've been so busy trying to get it all done. Uh, however the last step is to secure this um, last board in place into this box. Now this is the so-called light controller, um, so let me explain what that means. Um, these connect to things like switches at the front, um, I've also extended the three lights on the rest to the front here, you can just see them down there, the red, the blue and the green. Um, and I've also got these three MOSFETs here, um, these four spare connectors here to control um, potentially a headlight, a tail light and maybe some indicators, depending on how far I want to take this project, but the options are there and there's an Arduino here as well to control this light if I want to. And then this here is a um, buck converter which steps the 40 odd volts down to 12 volts and then the Arduino can regulate that for itself and then the 12 volts can be used to turn on the indicators and the rear light. Um, so this ethernet cable basically carries the uh, connections for the LEDs and the VESC, the switch, um, as well as the ring light for the switch as well. So that concludes it for another one of the e-bike series, thanks for watching the end of another one of my videos, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, comment down below if you have any future video suggestions and I'll see you in the next part.